How are we, boys? Fucking champion, my man. How are you doing, boy, son? Not bad, mate. Not bad. Um, usual Friday, man. Shattered, but on the bevy, so I'm all right. I'm all right, man. How are you, Andy, boy? Good. Glad to be here. No, not a bad week, actually. Not too bad, so can't complain. A wee hem tie. A wee hem tie for you this week. Um, just before we start, as always, across the bottom at the ticker, the main man, our Shug, boys on tour. Um... You'll see Shug's Instagram, Facebook and stuff on the bottom. Um, he's been a main sponsor for day one, so massive thanks to Shug. And all the other boys, we give the shout out, without repeat myself, look in the description box um, and YouTube. Also, if it's your first time joining us um, or listening, please hit the like and subscribe button to the YouTube channel. We're going the right direction. We're flying. And uh, just a wee additional one, uh, I'll give a wee shout out. Uh, Mike Fitzgerald, Conor McKee, Tommy Morgan, um, Daniel Gregg and Kaya Celtic are, are five subscribers in the last couple of days. So thanks very much to you guys. Aye, so tonight, as per usual, Friday night, we'll, we'll talk about a wee bit about Sunday. We'll talk about St Mirren. We've got the, the CSP. We've got the trivia. We've got the Who Am I? The usual Friday night stuff. So, um Aye, right, let's crack on, guys. Big hockey boy will deal with the comments. Anything relevant will be put up. Any, any shite will be bombed out. Um, <laughs> any, any mad tons will be, will be told to jog on as well. But hoggy, Hoggy's in charge of all that. So, uh, James is on Red Scotland. Evening, guys. Um, so, aye, right, listen. Let's crack on, as we always start. And our, our, our paddy, our paddy who unfortunately carry me away tonight. Um, I think he's up in the, the deepest, darkest Dundee. But what, what, what Paddy done last week, if, if he's joined us last week, was a bit of, a bit of random news, but, but, which is just a wee bit, a wee bit of fun. And, and it's a 30-second segment. And Pat, that probably the only person at the CSP that could pull these fucking random news pictures up is Paddy with the Jungle Gyms. And if you've no sub to the Jungle Gyms, go and have a look at them on YouTube as well. They do a Tuesday night, 7pm, and all the post-match stuff. So Paddy th- sent me three pictures a day. I think last week's was a bit mental. But these, these ones are no different. So the random news this week uh, for your Paddy um, is this. <laughs> That's the first one. Just, just before we get started, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one for the random news for the CSP, that's Fine Friday. <laughs> and that's it. A, th- a 30 minute segment. And, and only, pa- only Paddy could send them. <clears throat> only Paddy could send them. Um, <clears throat> right, first of all, Friday night, uh, as we always start, guys, uh, the Who Am I? Um, in between the trivia, uh, sorry, the the chat about St Mirren and the cup final and stuff, we have a wee trivia section as well, but we'll kick off with the Who Am I? as we always do on a Friday night. Um, I'm sure the boys are buzzing to go. And number one this evening, Give us boys. Deal. Give us a deal, boy. Number Give one us. this evening. And... Comment away. Hopefully, Hoggy and Andy will have their comments turned off. Yep, comments are turned off. So, apologies. I'm not going to put any comments up on the screen, guys. I'll catch you all up once we're done with this. Hoggy, but... Hoggy will scroll back through to see who's got the answers correct. Number one tonight in the Who Am I is this dude. Okay, dokie. And I will, I will jump back over them. I will jump back over them. Number two in the Who Am I tonight is... And number three, this fine Friday, is Ooh. that is that that that's the one I thought that'll maybe trip folk up tonight. Yeah. And and, yeah. and I, I left the hair in for that reason. Um so I right anyway, I'll jump back over them. Number one, number two, and number Three. All right, chips. 
And before I put the answers up, I'll start with Mr. Andy, and you can give me your three answers, mate. Andy looks like he's struggling. Andy, see if you'd have had a cup of rums and a roll up, man, you'd have got oil in. <laughs> I think I know. Um, the second one I think I go is I'm going to go be Boyd. Right, okay. The other two haven't got a fucking clue, mate. Not a I, clue. I, I, I actually thought the, the, the first one would have been the easiest for you. But, um, right, Hoggy, anyway, one to three, go for it. So, between number one and two, which was either Donati or Kenny Miller, I think it's Kenny Miller going with the brain that he's got in him. Number two, I'm pretty sure, is Peter Provo, Peter Grant. And number three, I, I'm, I'm proper fucking guess with this one as well, but is it the, this is fucking first name again? Um, El Yunusi. Is it Mohammed El, Mo, El Yunusi? Aye. I, I, I think I think number one, two. I'll let, I'll let Hoggy jump into the comments, but I, yeah. I think the same as last week, Hoggy. And I'm still not convinced you're no cheating, mate, but that's a full house for you tonight again, mate. I don't think Kenny Miller will that strip. How the fuck can I cheat? It's a full house because you've got access to StreamYard, you fucking weapon. I, I, I'm not getting into it, though. Right, I there's number one anyway, Hoggy. Who's on the fucking so green? I can't break up the photos and use a fucking on the chat with me, you kids. Anyway, you were right. It was right. a strip that put me off. I don't think he wore, wore that. That's... You were right with that one, Hoggy. Yeah. Number two, you were correct. Peter Provo. Yeah. Peter that, that's, that's, quite a, that's quite a famous, can you, because that, that was his testimonial. Against Bayern Munich. That's his testimonial, isn't it? Then you were right with number three as well, El Yunusi. So yes, a full a full house. How how did how did the viewers go on, mate? Um I'm just going through it the new mate. Um Alan Woods was saying one Lustig. We've got Lustig, Peter Grant and Crossas, Lustig, Boyd and Peter. Boyd and Peter. I was thinking like Crossas and all, but it was the tap yeah. that put me off the, the, the year of the tap. I didn't know if the guy was black or no, but it was a, there was another horn, a black horn that was kind of sitting there. Granty for two. Um, no bad. No bad. So they, they, actually, they actually did quite well, the viewers, to be fair. Aye, better than me, anyway. Aye, better than Andy. Andy's a good man. The middle one was definitely his testimonial as well. That's because that's <laughs> kind of, the way he's kind of stoned. That's quite a famous one. Um, Aye. Aye, anyway, good. Well done. Well done. No fucking beat for these pictures, my man. I know. I know. Hoggy Hoggy has. Hoggy's doing the damage with the pictures. Um, right, so we'll, we'll have a re rewind this this Friday night. Obviously, myself, Kevin and, and Scotty, uh, my mate for Spain, was on in, in Monday night. And again, thanks, by the way, because ne nearly 2,000 views on Monday is un absolutely unbelievable. So Andy and Hoggy were the only Monday. So we'll have a wee, a wee quick squint over the, the, the cup final. It's good to know you're getting better views when I'm known. That's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about um, sending your P45s out, to be honest yeah. with you. Uh, well, at least put me in the sub bench. Don't just sack me. You know what I mean? Aye. But um, I, I, obviously, we, we know we know what happened in Sunday. Hoggy, I was at the game with you, big man. What, yeah. what a day it was overall. But M Mr. Hogg was kind of posted missing for a couple of days, but uh, in regards to the game, mate, uh, uh, if you want to elaborate on your on your hangover and and what what the following days entailed, we we've seen some picture evidence. But you and Andy were the only Monday, so if you used to what if a we a we chat about the game, what happened, the goals, whatever you want to talk about, these are more than welcome to carry on for a wee ten minutes. Andy, over to you, brother. Aye, one of the ones, uh, usual game, you, you don't really take in what's happening because you're so emotional about it. It's not you look back on it, but that we were more comfortable in that game than what I thought at the time. You, you almost panic and stuff like that, but um, I actually heard a comment that i seen on TikTok. It, it came from Rangers Radio, and it was a guy saying, I mean, they only had two chances and your goal, and that's the two goals they scored. And I'm going, what game is he watching? <laughs> Unbelievable. Do you know what I mean? Um, 
we could have had five in that game quite easily, Aye. five or six. Um, with the last couple of minutes, Andy, we missed a couple of fucking sitters in the last the last five minutes of the game. Was no, that, so. Well, three, three anyway. Kyogo should have scored that header as well. Yeah, uh, Jota quite near the start. He had a good shot at goal as well. I think McGregor saved that. Um, so we, uh, as much at the time watching it live, you you get into the panic stations as soon as they start to get near your box or get any possession of the ball. But really. Yeah. Looking, looking back at it, we were never in any danger. We were in total control in that game. Apart from a wee spell, well, they had a wee bit of the ball, but other than that, they done nothing with it. Aye. Again, at the game, I'm fucking always a nervous break at these bastard games anyway, but um, the first half was, was again, I, I think we were, we were definitely the better team throughout the game. Um, usually in these games you can you forgive the, the fact that you, you think that the, the Rangers are going to have a, a sustained period of of pressure and, and possession and stuff like that as well, but they never had that at all. I certainly I can't recall that. The goal came at fucking the, the right time, if you were to say that. I thought we would have scored earlier. Um, but the right time and the, the half time fucking sing song was never, oh, never been, unbelievable. Never unbelievable. been a hand like that for a for a full half time. Fucking just yeah. absolutely chanted it out. It was I mean, yeah. my throat still fucked for, for the weekend as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, and, and we went to we went to two one and, and as I said, look, looking back and watching it again as well, we were far more comfortable. But I couldn't stay bastard still. Like the where it was weird because we where we were the the way that the day the, the ticketing the, is that all the bus allocations you, you're in these stand, so they allocate the buses all together of your allocations and stuff for the supporters clubs. So we again were right in the row. We were right the row behind the, the railway tavern support the Notre Dame bus. Um, so met Peco and stuff like that, the, the guys that was in there, and, and I just couldn't stand still. That way, you just kind of gone side to side. And honestly, see if somebody was standing behind me, they'd be like, just "Fucking stop moving, you, you fucking big dick!" But I just couldn't fucking actually stay still at all. Seeing the full fucking, seeing the full game, seeing the trophy figuring up, never in, and I just. A- a- amazing, and then then you get the fucking the hun bags and, and real asset to work. I, I chat for me, and when I walked in on Tuesday, just get a look at him. It was like I didn't even see uh, him. She, go for it. She goes, give me your best. I'm like, I'm not going to give you in. It's like I, I think you know exactly what I said to you last week, and again, I don't need to see anything. And you you know where you lie in this place. You know where you fucking what position you lie. He said like, we did the play and then this and the oh, doggy doggy. doggy. All the, all, the, all the excuses were coming out and, you know, <laughs> fucking can't they all should have played, this one should have played, and that one shouldn't have played, that one shite, and that one shite. And it's like, you weren't saying that fucking last week. You know, it was all yeah. these injured players that, oh, I hope all the injured players are back, I hope Lundstrom's back, I hope this one's back. It's like, <laughs> get it right round you. But no, the, the, the game, I thought the the game was, was I think Celtic were, were by far anybody neutral or, again, I think even any Rangers fans watching that would have seen that Celtic are a, a level up, a level above Rangers, and yeah, roll on the fucking start of April to we get the hold of them at Celtic Park because we will absolutely bobby them at our place. Bobby them. We, we, we still had done a couple of gears to go if we really wanted to as well. I mean, that's the frightening yeah. thing in it that they couldn't put a glove on us when we we're no at our best. Not that we were terrible, but we weren't at our best. If we we're at our best, we are destroying them. Absolutely. I, I, I said I said that for the game, Andy. It, it, anywhere between seventy and. 90 percent we beat them and, we, and we, as you say mate we weren't we weren't close to 100 percent and the two two one flattered them massively i totally totally flattered them you, uh, you i heard it earlier when i was when i was moving there and i it, it wasn't the cribs i just get bombed at the fucking living room there stubsy but um <laughs> i definitely mate we 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 had we had gears to go up i i don't think it was an off day by by any means but uh, as you say, if Kyogo scores that man, if Hacksaw scores at the end, if, if O'Reilly scores, and aye. But, but no, no, I'm not saying it with my green tinted glasses on, but uh, if we won 6 1 on Sunday, you, you wouldn't have blinked an eye. You wouldn't I, have blinked an eye. I, I mean, they, they had a couple of chat. I'm, ju- I'm just talking about chances created, Hoggy. I, yeah. I, don't, I, don't mean, I don't mean it was a 6 1 game, but. If we put our chances away, it could have easily been four or five, but without a doubt. No, I mean obviously Sakala's missed one. Um 
that's him. Was it Kane that hit the post and then it, it rebounded out to Sakala, was it? Is that the one that hit the post and then came to Sakala and he fucking... Aye, aye. Mm. I, th- I think the picture that somebody's got for a very good angle is it, it's more or less an open goal. I think it was bigger than the, the gap in his teeth, but um, that, that's what he gets for, for mouthing to the papers. But aye, all, all, in, all in all, a, a good day at the office. A, a brilliant day out with, with Hoggy and all the boys on the KT and again I'll, I'll reiterate what I said on Monday without getting into a big conversation about it all, all, all these people that talk about tin pot and shite leaks and, and blah 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 um, you have absolutely no idea how, how good it is to be a Celtic fan to go to these games with your mates to enjoy lifting trophies Callum McGregor said it you never get sick of it as a fan, you never get sick of it. Whether you think it's tin pot in Scotland and whatever else you may think, it's the best days of your life. Oh, I, I'll, 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 I'll take a treble every year, Hoggy. It's, it's Aye, absolutely. Amazing, one, thing I, one thing I didn't, I didn't realise until the, 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 the journey in, actually, was somebody was saying the bus in the way in that Callum McGregor in his final appearances at Hamden has never got a silver medal. He's never lost that. He's never lost a final yet. Never lost one, a final. One, was, I, I, didn't, I didn't know that, Grinny. I was like, holy shit. 14 out of 14 finals he's been to. He's been on the winning side. It's like, holy shit. And then it's yeah. like, just that, that and it, I didn't say anything, but that way in the back of your head, it's like, now that I know that, this is going to be the fucking one, isn't it? <laughs> this is going to be the one that fucking... I think as a Celtic fan, when you go to the kind of games, that, that's, the, that's the first time I've been to a, a derby game in the last five years that we've beat them so the paranoia was ripping out of me uh-huh. I was at the semi-final last year I was at the game they beat us when we get beat in extra time as well so yeah. I, they, they say you've got the angel and the devil, you've got the optimist and the pessimist on your shoulders going to these kind of games but I fucking fantastic day we, we, we did cover a lot of it in, in Monday so can I just, okay. can I just what, what, one week, one week point? I brought, I brought that point up there as well. And this, this, I just want to ask, ask that opinion as well. But anybody listening, viewing as well, please put your opinion in there as well. Stubbsy source. That's a, that's a very, that's a very. Winning is better than nah, nah, no chance. Depends who you're shagging up, I, I suppose. But um, well, I need to say I because many. <laughs> maybe if you're not that big fan, of course, because you're shagging sheep there as well. You might not be talking about her though. <laughs> aye, Listen, aye, aye. Winning, winning cup finals against Rangers at Hamden as well has been better than some of my sexual exploits. I will give you that. <laughs> right, I will give you that as well, but I can't say a blanket is better than that. Right? <laughs> That's all I'm saying there as well. They'll, they'll seen some of the fucking the, some of the hell <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> that have fucking been, been with. Yeah. So, yeah. But obviously, we, 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 shirt, did cover, <laughs> we, did, we, we did cover. The final on Monday, uh, me and Kevin Scott. And again, thanks very much for the views. That it, it was brilliant. But I, before we move on to a wee preview um, of St Mirren on uh, Sunday, just wrote a couple of things down. O- obviously, before the cup final on Sunday, Andy, uh, your man Sakala and Beal were giving it fucking big licks and, and, and we've shut them up. Um, again, again, Michael Beal's in the, in, the, in the news giving it about money, about this, and getting into the summer, and I've not got any to spend, I don't want to get into the loan market, blah, blah, blah. John Lindstrom's coming out saying it was a one-half game, we're no miles after them, and talk, talking talking utter shite, and, and we spoke about it on Monday in, in regards to being classy and classless, um, and, and, and the divide between what Callum McGregor is a captain and what the Celtic squad done on the run up to that final compared to them, just just showed you how much class we've got as a club. That's all down to Ange and Callum McGregor telling the squad that, that this is what you see in the media. Fuck knows what they're doing on the other side of the water. And then the other divide is, is their jigsaw tifos um and the Green Brigades. The 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 divide in regards to every single aspect of it the both clubs at, at this moment in time. It's, it's, it's so it's so big it's fucking unbelievable and it, it's good to see before the game and us winning shutting the cunts up but after the game that they're, they're still showing their faces on on the news and all that Andy and, and still bumping their guns 
you, you, you would think after the, the getting beat and the Sakala stuff and all that, Michael Beal and whoever else that may be involved would say, right, what watch what he's saying in front of the TV. You know what I mean? But these guys like Lundstrom and that are still fucking need nappies on their chin. There's that much shape for on at their mouth, you know what I mean? I think what, what Beal's got to do is get the players in the dressing room and say to them, see that other mob next door, that's the levels you just need to be hitting. Yes. That's, that's what it is to be winners. See that guy that leads that team out there? He's a serial winner. See you there, fucking Mr. Tavernier. You're a fucking serial fucking loser. Proven serial loser. Seven, so, seven, seven, 17 trophies you've been captain for now, Andy. Aye. aye. And no, no, what you're looking at is them saying, oh, the, the, the gap's no, that there's no much between the teams. Well, if there doesn't have much a gap between the two best teams, apparently, in Scotland, they're meant to be at the level where us are maybe a wee bit better, is what they seem to think. Nine points is a hell of a gap for two teams that are very similar. Nine points is a massive gap in Scotland between the top two if they're meant to be the same level aside. That's a huge, huge uh, difference. <coughs> Yeah, of course it is, mate, of course. I think, the, 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 just to kind of add on that as well, that, that we, we said it last Friday when we were talking about just the lead-up to it and, and, and all the, the sound bites you were getting was for the Rangers. And and it's it, it's just, it, it's standards now. Like, you, you've listened, see, and I'm not saying Celtic's always been 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 innocent or been, been like this as well, but Celtic in the past as well will have been noisy when it's in the lead-up to finals and stuff like that. Uh, but, uh, but, makes you go, but, oh, fucking shut up. You're right, Hoggy. The, the noise coming out for us, what, what allegedly walking into this 10 in a row is unbelievable when look what yeah. happened. I know. That's what I'm saying. So that it's no... I think it's just with the regime that we're in the new. That, 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 that there is a defined standard, not of what the expectations is on the pitch, but it's the expectations of you being a Celtic player, you being an ambassador for our club. Do not go out there and solid the name of Celtic by saying absolute shite to one of your pals in the media who can twist it run about as well to make it sound like something yeah. else that you said as well. Give them an opportunity to do it because the mainstream media up there as well will take whatever you give them, turn it, spread a wee bit of shite and sugar and tap it as well and punt it out as a fucking exclusive story. They're an absolute fucking joke up here yeah. as well. So the standards that they're setting, and Andy, that's a great point you said there. They should be. They should be pointing at the other end of the city and say, that's your example. That's what you need to fucking hit. See all your brown brogues and your blue suits and all that kind of stuff. That says fuck all. That's not a standard setting as well. Yeah. Your, your behaviour and your actions will set your standards rather than what you're fucking wearing. Now that they've again... Got na- they've got naked my about them at all. They, they, they're, 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 they're full of bitterness and hatred now. Yeah. That again, bringing that back in as well is just another name trying to get tied into the way it was before, you know, when when they were going through their nine and old years and stuff like that, it was always the fucking the, the, the stuff. Yeah. Let's get back to that. There's, there's, there's nothing about forward thinking. It's about clinging back to what they were before. Exactly. Back to, but that's, that's our know. culture. The that, exactly. They're always, always trying to do is they'll see all the knuckle daggers as well to say, right, Moan, I'm one of you now. Yeah. And they will never, ever, ever come out, ever, ever come out and give Anne Postacoglu the credit or Callum McGregor the credit or Celtic the credit. Yeah. Or, it's, it's, or, it's, it's, it's exactly the same as Scott Brown. Exactly the same as Scott Brown. Yeah. And, and and it's just absolute fucking bitter jealousy oh. because if, if you know what I, if, I heard mentioned with him talking about oh I and that the two Rangers support so uh, they'd more Rangers supporters in their team than than us to get going on about Callum McGregor and Taylor and I thought that's what we talk fuck. about is shit like that that's a shit that's a shit aye so that 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 was just a wee point I wanted to make in regards to the media stuff and listen Celtic of of. I've carried herself very well, I think, for, for Ange, no, no, not just in the lead up to the final, Hoggy, ju- just since he's been there. Yeah. Since he's been there, I think Ange came in, obviously we know what happened the year before he came in and we know what happened when Ange came in with the, with the squad and, and what was happening and the league was finished and he was away before Christmas and the way him and the staff and, and the players have carried themselves through it ne- nearly two years later, has been impeccable and, and it's good to watch. It really is good to watch, obviously. But the year before with Lennon and all the stuff happened with the fans that's and all a, that's that stuff. a great point there about the no having 
I think it's just we caught fine on it and I never had the two teams on it. And, and, and that, that was something I actually never brought up in, in Monday because I, I, I never really knew much about it. But aye, that listen again, Andy, that's just another another It's petty, isn't it? It's all petty stuff. It, listen, it's 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 just another thing that shows them up for what they really are, mate. Uh, if they're not willing to put Rangers v Celtic League Cup final two thousand twenty three on their shirt, it shows them for, it shows them up for what they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're Right, I've spoken enough about that shit anyway. Right. I've just got another couple of points uh, before we move on to St Mirren. And, um, one of the points is just in regards to Scottish football, and I'll, I'll pick it to you, Andy. Um, Jim Goodwin's been appointed the Dundee United manager, right? Um, Dundee, I don't, I don't mind Dundee United. I couldn't give a fuck about them, to be perfectly honest about you, but... Obviously, Jim Goodwin goes down to Darville and gets absolutely humiliated in, in, in the Scottish Cup. And then five, six days later, they get beat six and a half hibs. And he's now been appointed the... the Tartman here. He's still there? Yeah, he's he just he froze a wee bit there on the screen, mate. You're a wee bit... Uh, I don't know what happened. All right. I don't know what Aye, I, I, I were back in the game. I don't know what happened game. there. Aye, so obviously the Darville result, then the Hibs result, and then you see it in the news the other day that he's been given the, the Dundee United job. And listen, good luck to him, right? As, as I said, I don't really give a fuck about Dundee United. The bottom of the league, they're struggling. Right. Absolutely scalped at Arf Ross County last week, 4 nothing. But a very, very fucking strange appointment. Very strange appointment. I, I think he'd done a good job at St Mirren. And it, it, he's maybe done a, a half decent interview, get into, get into Tanadice, but and this is us on a Celtic podcast, but I just thought it was a, a half decent conversation. Um, Jim Goodwin, Dundee United job, fucking strange one for me, mate. I, I thought he was one of the managers that <coughs> his stock was quite high at St Mirren. He's made a country at Aberdeen and it, it kind of disappears. And you don't hear him for a wee while, but he stepped in. He stepped into another massive job. Don't you? He's in a big, big club in Scotland, mate. He's all, he's obviously very confident in his ability as a manager. I think I think he has a good manager, good coach. He's shown that it's at Mirren. He's it's obviously no work to the Aberdeen. But as far as I'm aware, Aberdeen and Dundee United are kind of rivals, aren't they? So it's, uh, it's a strange move from that point of view. I think it's a bit quick, especially after the way he left. Uh, uh, the, the last few results were really embarrassing actually and the fact that he's getting into a club that's struggling I, I never thought of Jim Goodwin as being a tight a firefighter uh, manager uh, to me he's somebody that, that, that um, needs time to build a team and get them playing into his system and stuff I, I don't think United have to go that they, they need somebody that's going to come in and change things right away because if they don't start getting results soon they're gone and uh, then that's another kind of no. I suppose you can't if it does happen, you can't put it on Jim Goodwin. But at the end of the day, if it does happen, he's a manager at the time when it happens, so it doesn't look good on him either. So he's taking a big chance here. Aye, uh, strange, strange appointment, Hoggy. Strange appointment. I, 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 don't, I don't honestly think it is that strange, to be honest. Um, is where else do these clubs look? I mean. but that, that's what it's got to say. So we're, we're, we're talking that the only point Andy said he's only been appointed to the end of the season, right? So he's got that remit basically, it's coming in there. Keep us Keep up. up. Right. And, and at this stage is where we're in March, right? You've got three months left of that league. Right. And you're gonna bring you're gonna bring somebody in that doesn't know the league, doesn't know the style of it, but doesn't know the clubs that he's playing against, doesn't know the teams that he's playing against. Good point, good point. There's a lad as well that's managed in this in this league for the last fucking what, four or five years. And he's, he's very well known and versed in what Scottish trip was. And he came out in the paper and he said that oh, a, a bad week at Aberdeen killed me. It was a bad fucking month, I think he had, mind you, but but before that, see the start of the season, Aberdeen, he actually built a decent wee side there. He was building some some good players that he brought in. They were they did have a wee spell where they were doing all right. But then I, th I think you said the turning point, Hoggy, was that the, obviously Celtic got a last minute winner against them. And then they were beating the Huns two man and they scored yeah. two goals in injury time. And and listen, you can you can you can say that's an excuse, but when you when you're playing against the two big guns. 
and you, you should probably have picked up four points and you pick up fuck all. That's it's going to be a, a sliding, kick. sliding doors it, moment there. It's isn't going, it? That's, that's going to be uh, a kick at the balls, isn't it? That's a massive it's, kick in the ball. Especially the Rangers one, mate, because he's they're winning getting into injury time and you're losing yeah. it. And that's the one that when you play against Celtic and, and <coughs> again, it's with me with my bias specs on, but Celtic are known for pushing right to the end, scoring a lot of late goals, putting the pressure on you as well. Yeah. And, and yeah, and we did. That was partly what Celtic do. The Rangers one was a fucking collapse for them. That wasn't the that wasn't the Rangers putting them under that much pressure. That was they absolutely shat the fucking nest. Aye, they and, sat in. They sat in an elite. They absolutely shat and still that one. But as I say, I, I, I don't think it's a strange appointment. I, I think it's it's maybe maybe I suppose because of with the 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 Darvo and all the stuff that happened to to let them get right back in, as you said, Del, to to be you're talking Scottish clubs as well, a, a big name in Scottish football. But I, I don't think if you're talking what's available there, the new you could have picked up very very quickly to come in and, and know a good bit about the club. Probably know a lot of the players because he would have done his scouting on the players when you're playing against them and things like that. Yeah. I don't think it's probably the worst decision, but. Listen, it'll be no, right yeah, right I, think season, right? I think that's a good point that I probably never thought. Look, if if you do go and look at a manager from maybe League League One in England or something, and expect them to come up and work miracles, I yeah. Jim Goodwin's had an absolute torrid time at Aberdeen, but you're a hundred percent right, mate. He knows the league, he knows the players. What what's the point in going and bringing in a totally different entity and expecting them to keep him up? Yeah. Aye, mate. Aye, that's a very good point. I agree with you, mate. Aye. I don't know if I agree with you, but... Who would, who would come in and actually take that job if you actually offered that out to a guy from England and say, we're going to get eight to six ones because we're shitting ourselves in case we actually get put down. We don't know what budget we're going to get. Ashgar, obviously, the sporting director, get whether, he's, whether he resigned or whether he's out the door or no. See, so, see no matter how good a coach you are, in this day and age, nobody gets enough time to actually try and... Uh, put their ideas into a, a, a team that they've just went to. And as soon as they get a few bad results out the door, and it, it, you, you really feel sorry for managers because they, they're obviously under pressure. And if I don't get this right, if I don't get this right, I'm out the door. And it, they maybe make rash decisions and, and get the team to play away that they don't actually want to play in, in order to get results. Uh, so you don't see that they're, they're through. Yeah, it's it's, how it's, bad can it's, I play devil's advocate just for a minute? Why not talk for me? I'm just going to get my bottle. So that's all right. And they just don't yeah. devil's advocate a wee bit on that, mate. Just the point you mentioned there as well. It's like, like you, I, I agree with you as well. In general, you, you you're not given that that amount of time. But you look at our manager, right? And he came in appointed as well. And came in with a hell of a job. Mm -hmm. Which if you're looking comparable stuff as well, is at the same level. No, it's, it's obviously no. But that was a manager as well who was. Didn't they start well, you know, and and lose, losing lost his first league game at Hearts and, and didn't they do well at all in the first three games, six games, six first, games, six, right? Sorry, sorry. Um, but I think I think Celtic could say and, and when you hear Ange talk about it, it was almost they believed in him and what he wanted to, um, I suppose, to put into Celtic and look what's happened and you, you forget it and it's like listen, there's going to be some bumps in the road as well. They came fucking very very early for you, mind you. Aye. Yeah. But I think that's a, that's a great a great thing that, and again, not just because it's Celtic, but any club as well, that if you're going to appoint a manager who's coming in and selling you on a, on a vision, yeah. you've got to give them the fucking breathing space to actually in that vision. <laughs> now, what I don't think has happened with United, and again, we'll, we'll move on for this because we're fucking talking about Dundee United here, but is that I don't think he's coming in with a, a remit to reshape this squad. You know, we'll bring in players and stuff like He's coming in with one fucking job. And it's like, sort that fucking squad out, keep us in this bastard league, and then we'll maybe talk after that. Because if this Ashgar guy who was a sporting director, they all fucking hate it. He's getting punted. They're not replacing him. They want a manager to come in and almost be that that kind of central figure of a club to, to run it like like an Ange's. Because Ange's, you know, he's a fucking man for all the decisions with that club. So I listen. I, I don't I don't dislike Dundee United. It's one of the clubs as well. I don't have any, any feelings of like or dislike for them. They're just yeah, yeah. great. great away, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind Dundee United. And I, I, no, I wish Jim Goodwin all the best. But I, I just don't know if he's he's a type of manager that's that is going to be able to go go in and really ruffle them up enough to to make a big difference. I I, I just don't get that impression. He's that type of manager. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Aye. Good luck to him. Hope but he does I like all against us. That's right. Yeah. But, 
<coughs> uh, back to league action, Hoggy, Sunday yeah. afternoon. Um, Paisley, the only pay, the place that we have lost this season, other than dropping two points at the ship pit. Um, I've seen a couple of comments earlier in regards to full squad, full strength, don't wear the grey strip, the grey strip pin, I agree with you, get that to fuck, don't wear it, don't wear it. Love, lovely top. It's it's the it's the only type of pot this year, to be honest with you. But I mate, I think in my in my opinion, we go to they they obviously play on Saturday. Who who do they play on Saturday? They're at home to Kelly, I think it is. No, right, I, so, I think it's Kelly. Right, so you're you're, you're, t- you're taking it that they're they're going to pick up three points. So I mate, I don't I don't think anything other than going to Paisley. That you you start exactly the same team for for Hamden, mate. I, I I don't see Ange making many changes, e- even though the, the the cup final showed the the golf and class for me, mate. Um, and also the substitutions we brought on compared to what they brought on, it just shows the squads fucking a million miles away. But I for me, you go to you go to Paisley, you you, you play your strongest squad. You, you're probably going there six points clear, no nine. Because you'd imagine the rotten mob are gonna gonna win on Saturday. So do you think you you're you're gonna be watching the game on Sunday as pair, Ange Postacoglu, same team as we always speak about, the possibility maybe maybe a wee wide man change. Other than that, nothing drastic. I, I think the, the we always speak about it, and we, I think what you'll see is two changes. I think you'll see a winger change, and I think you'll see a central midfield change. Do you think? Do you think that will happen on Sunday? I. I think he. I think he'll make change. I don't think he'll play the same team as he, as he did against Rangers. Big open pitch like Hamden as well. Gone to St. Mm-hmm. Love Street. Maida might not be as effective as well. Just thinking, maybe, maybe it is. Uh, maybe like a Haksabanovic kind of type coming in there as well. Get a start. <coughs> maybe a Nabada. I, I think you'll definitely see changes. I think there'll be changes. One or two wingers will change, um, and I, and I think you'll see a, a, a change in the middle. Um, as well, that's just my go to all the time, mind you. But of course, it's, it's, of a, course it's it is. It's a split between Arn Moy and and and, and Matt O'Reilly is going to be the two that will interchange for me. Um, I, I think I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't disagree. And obviously, you can kind of you, you can you can kind of guess Angie's team week in, week out, you know, who's going to start other than the odd two, Andy, and, and, and who's going to be on the bench. But I, I know, I know exactly what. Anthony's saying, sorry, Hoggy. I know, I know exactly what Anthony's saying, and and I think, I think under Ange Postecoglou, Andy, that was the game that he did actually make significant changes, and we get beat. And since then, he's not done it. Mm-hmm. And, and and us as Celtic fans have always kind of hung on Andy's words that I've got a squad and I'm going to use it. And that day at Paisley, he done it and he made five or six changes and we get beat 2-1. And and since that day, I think to this day, other than maybe a League Cup game at Paradise, he's only he's only tinkered with the one or two. Do, do you think going going back to then and just thought, right, I, I made all the changes, I, I'm not going to do that again. I, I'm not going to do it. I, I'm going to play my strongest team. I'm going to get my three points and I'm going to do my Ange Postacoglu if if we're strolling it, sixty minutes, three players are on seventy five, one players own, eighty minutes, the next players own. For for me, I don't disagree with hockey, but I think the team that won the cup on Sunday starts this Sunday as well. I I I was actually thinking that as well until Hoggy brought up the point of Haksibanovic and I thought to myself, that's a good shout, by the way. Um, I would love to see him get me a minutes, I, uh, so, so would I. I think he's a good player, I and he's solid. Um, <coughs> what, whether he's going to take uh, my either half and put put him in place of him is another story. Um, because he he's he, he likes my either, doesn't he? And he's 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 doing a business for him. Um, what it's it's one of the games. I don't know. It, you you want to be really confident about it, but there's always that wee inkling in the back of your head because of what happened that time. Uh, last time we were there. I, th- I think any game. I think any game away from him in Scotland, even though we're playing so well, you, you've always got that wee bit in the back of your head thinking this could be the one we fucking we could slip up. You know what I mean? But 
but I, I don't think so. I think we are getting stronger and stronger. I don't think we are going to make mistakes like that again. I just don't think it's going to happen. And as a manager that, that learns from mistakes, and uh, he's shown that because that was the last time that really happened domestically. So I, I, I'm expecting a win. It's on the <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. So I, I as I say, we'll, we'll we'll have a wee prediction after the boys in, in regards to Sunday at, at Love Street or whatever it's called now, the St Mirren Stadium. I, 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 I can see where Hoggy's coming for. I, I think if you're going to rest any player, Hoggy, and and what I will say in regards to the Japanese guys, Kyogo, Maeda, Hatate, I think, and and, and not just saying name. With the other Celtic players, I think their fitness levels are absolutely above and beyond anybody else in the league. Anybody else in the league, <coughs> and I think you could play Maeda ninety minutes every week, and the guy wouldn't get tired. He wouldn't get tired. If if he was a Polis and Motherwell, and he was chasing me, I would just sit down. He's, he's one of the players, but I think out of the squad, Hoggy, if if you were going to rest a player. Looking towards Tynecastle away in the cup, Hearts at home, Hibs at home, and another derby coming up. My for me is a guy you would rest, and you've got hats on, you've got a badder. But that's yeah, that's that, what I was going to say because we've got hats midweek here, next. Here week. goes, here goes. Good luck to you, brother. We've got hats midweek. Best, best noise in the world. Oh, James. Oh, sorry, mum. Sorry, mum. Um, you've got hats next week. In, in mid in Wednesday next week midweek at Celtic Park, so yeah. again I, I think the, the, for for me Maeda starts that game. It, it's and they, listen, the guys have they've, they've no way to take extra time. They, they've they've played a game of football which they always play. There's sometimes the emotion and, and the, the the occasion will, will put that extra stress in their body as well that might make can fucking tire them out a wee bit more. But you're right. I don't just think it's limited to the, the Japanese players as well with the fitness. I think Celtic as a unit. Are, are, are the fittest team in the league. And I think if you look at all the statistics, it would back that up as well with possession in the last 10 minutes, goals in the last 10 minutes and how all that works out. That, that, that kind of pushes, pushes that kind of thing. I just think for me, it always makes a, a couple of wee tweaks. I, I think the, the the comments are very, very correct what they're saying that last time we went there, we made all the changes. We didn't have a, a front pair, a, a defensive pair so we and we two unrecognised or no unrecognised centre halves, but certainly for a first eleven point of view with the centre halves, which was Welsh and Jens, was it? The two that started the centre half that day. So uh, it could have been I. Two boys as well that you no say we didn't trust them, but you know, look at what Starfield and, and CCV have, have, have done together as well. Go there in that big bullet or the big bully, the big <coughs> one. And Disney, Disney push fucking CCV running about like that. Absolutely not. So, from yeah. a defensive point of view, you're going to be much, much stronger there with the unit you've got if you've got the way that Celtic are playing. And Andy had a great point there that we're getting stronger. And Andy said it at the start of the year. Celtic will, will, will get stronger as the year goes on and we'll get better as the year goes on. And he's, yeah. we're doing exactly that. We're getting stronger, we're getting better as the years on. And look at a lot of the players post-World Cup. Hatati's turned up post-World Cup and been outstanding. Moy's been fucking outstanding. Alistair Johnson's been outstanding. There's no been a bad player for us in that. Kyogo's fucking been outstanding. You know, Jota's turned it back on. Maida's been outstanding. You know, Taylor's come in been outstanding. I just think there'll be a couple of changes as well. And 4-0 Celtic. 4-0. Uh, just, just before we move on to Andy, Gary, uh, at 7 o'clock every Friday, um, uh, we're very punctual in this podcast. So uh, <laughs> if, if, you're, if you're late again, <laughs> just, go, just, go and, just go and watch the Boise fucking nuggets because we, we, we're not very happy with this. In fact, no, don't watch them. Don't uh, watch Gary, it. Gary, we'll forgive you, brother. We'll forgive you. You've, you've, you've came on. That's all that matters, my man. Uh, that matters. Uh, but don't, be, don't be late again, you prick. All right. <laughs> um, not for you guys on the podcast that didn't turn up Monday at all. <laughs> yes, I know. That, that's true. I need two nuggets here. <laughs> and, and Andy was kidding or he was busy doing things in a lorry and I know for a fact Hoggy was spooked out his tree so um, I did I did see a wee picture of Nicky sent us a day of the alleged new the alleged new fourth kit I'll just try and find it whether or no whether or no it's true we don't know in my opinion 
Um, it was actually something I was going to bring up. Um, if it is a fourth kit, it's a fucking disgrace anyway. Um, just with the money that Celtic are getting every year, a new home tap, a new away tap, a new mm. third kit, especially with the the, 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 the living crisis and all the Tories being in charge, the, the fuel prices, the food banks and all that. If, if Celtic are going to bring a fourth kit out in March or April, I think it's fucking shocking. Um, I did see the new the new retro stuff the other day, Hoggy and Andy, that, that, that's been kind of posted on. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind a couple of the things. I think they're quite nice. I like my Adidas retro stuff and that. What I did see was 50 quid for a pair of shorts, £70 for a T-shirt and a hundred and seven pound for a top. So um, I, I, I think if you're talking about Celtic, Andy, um, where, where we started and, and why the club started, and they're bringing a a first, second and third kit out every single year and talking about a fourth kit halfway through the season and bringing these retro strips out and, and, and charging people 50 quid for shots and 70 quid for shots, then they need to have a fucking look at themselves. Right. <coughs> they need to have a serious fucking look at themselves. Uh, I've got two boys and if they ask for the strips, I get them it. And, and that's maybe me focusing, well, why buy it? Uh, I never had a lot as a kid, and, and if my wains want stuff, then I, I buy them it. But I think Celtic need to have a, a massive, massive look at their sale, Andy, with prices and stuff. I don't know what kind of contracts they go into with, with Adidas and all that, and, and if, if they tell them the prices that they need to sell stuff at. But aye, aye, it's a, it's a disgrace, mate. It, it, it's aye. fucking terrible. It's really, really bad that they do that. And, um, how do you go, Stone Doubtler? Listen, mate. If if that's your gig, that that's great, mate. I, I I wish every Celtic podcast all the best. I hope they do well and uh, good luck to them. Apart from them, aye. Anyway, but see that tap you're talking about—the one that we, we had a wee look at earlier. I don't even like to look at it. To be quite honest with you, um, I I don't like it. It's maybe just that maybe the. The, the lights hanging on that hanger doesn't help with the snow exactly set out right, does it? But I nah, don't it, mind it. I, I like I like the bottle green colour. It's a, it's a colour. I don't I don't mind the colours in the colour, but I just don't <laughs> like football yeah. taps that are full, that full there. I just don't like it. Um, uh, but I that's another one. Number four, the Wayne's are going asking for. Can I get or oh, can I get the whole kit? Next time you're away to credit union, try to fucking get a loan off them to pay for it. Not mean then you can't pay your electricity. It's a lot of money, mate. It's a lot it's of money. Nice mate. Picture this up there, but basically you've got a, it's almost like a bottle green fucking tap. It looks more like a polo tap to me. And you've got the the trickler run about the collar and the sleeve. Um, listen, it, it's a nice colour of jersey as well. But I think the 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 point that you're mentioning, Dells, is absolutely spot on. That it's it, it's another jersey on top of three other jerseys. Yeah, uh, and it, it just. If it I, just, just I, just I just I just think the club and and, and listen, we, we are where we are in in, in two thousand twenty three, and I think if you look down south and, and you want to buy a an Arsenal tap, it's like one hundred thirty quid just for the yeah. top only. So, listen, we we are we are not a club that's any different for anybody else in regards to inflation and and price costs and all that and. The likes of Adidas and Nike and Castor and fucking Hummel and whoever else it may be, will will design the tops, but they they'll dictate to the club how much they want back. I I, I just think that Celtic could. I just think that Celtic could do do a lot better. Um, I don't see any reason why we need to have new taps every twelve months. I just don't get it. I don't. I, get it. I think I think we need to. Listen, there's been there's been a picture that's appeared and then it's all the well, I've heard this, I've heard that, I've heard this, I've heard that. It, it might be that it's next year's tap and it's just a leak out already in next year's tap. I've seen some I didn't hear it until there, somebody said it's a St. Patrick's Day fucking special. Two if it has that, if it has that, it's absolute bullshit. Right. Two weeks away from St. Patrick's Day, they've, they've got to try and get this. If they were going it's, to do and, that, and well, you're on, well, well, you're on the point. Air Shug's got a St. Patrick's Day top out. Now we're on the point. Um, buy that, buy that, don't buy the Celtic tap. Aye. If you're going to do a St. Patrick's Day tap like that, then there would be a lot of, I'd imagine a lot of um, 
kind of promoting it, promotional stuff done as well. To, aye, to, to, aye, this aye, is aye, aye, coming out in. So I don't, uh, I don't think it is a St Paddy's Day one. I don't think it'll be a late in the season one because we're in fucking March. I think if that's so anything, it's coming out. Two, two weeks a day. Two weeks a day. Hoggy St Paddy's Day. So. Yeah, exactly. So I'm saying it's it's no. I don't think it's a St Paddy's Day one. It'll be a next season one. <coughs> but we de- we definitely screamed by what we're talking about. Um, Hoggy said four nil, and then eight minutes later <coughs> we're talking about something totally different. But um, if you dare listen to us on a weekly basis, that's how I we know. fucking roll. So I think we're at fifty one minutes. Hoggy said Celtic four St Mirren nil at thirty two minutes. So um, Andy, what's your thoughts on Sunday and? What do you think the outcome will be for the Hoops, mate? I was going to say 2-1 at first, but I'm going to go 3-1. Celtic, uh, I thought it might be quite tight, but no, I think I think we'll score three goals. I think they might get one right enough. Um, so I'll go for 3-1. 4-0, Hoggy, 3-1. I, I'm, I'm going to say 2 and a half. I, I think um, the, the, the park at St Mirren's a wee bit tighter than... Other other ones obviously kind of for part you sometimes kind of struggle to get a goal or two but um I two two and a half for me um I, I agree with Hoggy what he's saying I think you maybe see a bad coming in as well uh, other than other than the cup final team at the weekend I think a bad might a bad might come in but I wouldn't be surprised to see the same start in eleven so I two two nil for me four nil for Hoggy three one for Andy. If you have been listening the last couple of weeks and you do like a bet, listen to Andy. <laughs> and, and, I don't and get the last one right. And get your get your dough on that. But um Andy, I the am. most popular the most popular one for the comments is three one, brother. So yeah. you've got nah, that way. Right. 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 I've seen you know, like, Gary's <laughs> Again, guys, I'm seeing a lot again a, a, a kind of new names popping up and if you have just kind of found the channel, um please hit the like and subscribe button. But, we're on our way to where we want to be. Um, we appreciate all the all the comments and everybody coming on. And it's getting better every week, by the way. And for a few guys that come on and talk shit, so for sitting in a pub, going towards a thousand fucking subscribers and all these comments every week and viewers, it's fucking great, man. So if you have the subscribe to the channel, please, please, please do. And the the TikTok channel as well, where we're on the the, the social media kind of hang. Absolutely flying, uh, kind of three thousand people as well on that, and must be must be northy. Can't be a kick now, half a million views on that now, Andy, is it? No, it's no, it's nowhere near that. Um, you're probably that's me fucking shot then, that. Ah, but six hundred, about six hundred thousand or something. Run about that. I've no checked for a while, but roughly, I'm kind of gauging on the weekly kind of views. I, I would go be a bit, maybe around about six hundred thousand, maybe just over. All right, all right. That's fine then. Get up, yeah. I saw the the TikTok as CSP podcast eighteen eighty eight. Yep. Yeah. What's this? What was that? What are you watching, Hoggy? I'm just actually going to check the TikTok to see if I can see when it views it is. I think only Andy can see it on the analytics. Ah, uh, analytics. Is it right? Only Andy can see it on the analytics. Right, we you're are that stage. Just log in, Hoggy. Just log in, yeah. Oh, I can't, can't oh, remember that. We are at that stage of the night, guys, and we will jump into a wee trivia section for the guys. Again, comments off, and off. this is also our, our, our very good friend, Mr Nicholas Weir, resident of Switzerland, formerly of Dublin, formerly of Motherwell, who does the quiz questions. So this is the wee Friday night teaser, the trivia. Three questions, and I will put them up on the screen for you tonight. Uh, we'll do this every Friday now. So I'll stick them up on the screen for Andy and Hoggy. They'll turn the comments off. We'll stick the answers up in five minutes. He's can have a wee think. So here is the CSP trivia questions for Friday night. There we go. So these are Foster set a new goalkeeping record for the club during the 2013-14 campaign of clean sheets. How many consecutive minutes did they manage? Now that's a very, very hard question, but well, we'll see who gets closest. <coughs> Question two is, in what year did the club fail to secure a, a sponsor for the shirt um, the first time since the early 80s and took up to field an unblemished hoops? Um, two seconds, just look at that. 
comment off so we can see it a bit better. And question number three, in what year did Carling become the official shirt sponsor? So that's the three questions for the night. Um, I'll let the boys crack on and I'll I'll have a wee look at the comments, Hoggy. Uh, Patrick McLaughlin, no miles away, mate. No miles away, mate. Um, aye, aye, no miles away. Oh, how are you getting on with the Evans trips? Um, I'm still thinking about number two. Still thinking about what? Number three? Number two. Number two. Put, put them up, by. Just keep the comments after now so we can see the podcast. I know, I've got the comments on, mate. Just in case the other folk can't see it. Aye, so that's the three questions for Friday night. <coughs> I'll let the boys mull over that for an RB 30 seconds, then I'll get the answers up. Um, quite a tough one this week. Quite a tough one. I think question number one, you're not going to get it absolutely on the money in, unless you do Google it. Um, I do actually remember he was... I, th I think, I'm sure that year, Hoggy, when, when uh, Arandi, when Foster was gone for that, he was kind of getting close to remember maybe Peter Check's record or something like that, if I remember right. There was some sort of British record. I think Peter Check maybe broke Peter Schmeichel's record Aye. and then Foster was getting to that stage, he was getting close um, right, I'll have a wee look at the comments, right, I'll have a wee look at the comments, 900 minutes for Ian 1100, Stubbsy 1983, Patrick McLaughlin, 2003, Carlin 1995 Alan Woods, 1100, 1997 2008 Aye, oh, always, always very good answers, man. By the way, <coughs> good idea. So, go stick a question up again, Dale. Um, there you go, mate. There we go. And I'll be 20 seconds on this, then I'll put the answers up. Some cracking answers in the comments, by the way. Good answers in the comments. Quite happy. Yep. Um, MDLs. What's on your badge, Dale? Um, are you talk about you talk about my t-shirt? Um, if you're talking about the top, mate, it's the sponsors for the podcast. Um, I'll put the banner back up for our shug. If you're if you're white man, John, catch your shug. Nineteen eighty-eight. Right, let's go, guys. Answers ready? Yeah. In fact, no. Give me your answers. Give me your answers. Sorry. Hoggy? Yes. Um, for number one, I've went 1,150 minutes. 1,000. What did you say, Hoggy? Sorry? 1,150 minutes. Okay. I've wrote, I've wrote it down, but some tell me 1,200, but 1,150. Right, okay. Number, number two, I went 1,990. I had no fucking clue. 1,990. And number, three, number three, 2,003. Okay. Andy, boy, what's your answers, mate? Number one. You can have one, a wee look two, in the comments do Hoggy, and see what the crack is. 1,097. 1,097 for Andy, okay. Question two, 1993. 19 what? 93. 1993, okay. And not, uh, question three, 2008. <coughs> 2008, okay. Right, okay. I'll stick the answers up just now, Trips. Here we go. There we go, guys. Hoggy was right on question three. Um, that's about it. And Hoggy was also closest on question number one as well. So, um, I, Andy, you're fucking hopeless, mate. No, see, I, get, see, I get 93. I... Oh, so you did, mate. I, sorry. Well, I, sorry. I suppose that's maybe the season before it. I suppose so. Andy, I'll give you 93 for that. No, 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 no. That's fine, that, that's fine. But the... Because but that there's there's a wee if you think back to last week's trivia, there was maybe a wee clue on it as well because NTL was the immediate predecessor to Carlin. Maybe and, maybe there's a bit of method behind Nicky's madness, Hoggy. NTL's last I think NTL's last actual fucking appearance on our jersey was 
Seville because it was the actual the, the tap they wore in Seville was the actual design for the first Allen tap. Yeah. Um, sorry, just just getting the just getting shug the, the sponsor a wee punt. Um, I think the tops stoned out lot well, are uh, thirty quid. I'm sure they're I'm sure they're thirty quid. Um, he's also got the tops previous. He does personalised flags and stuff as well. So. Um, I I thirty, 30 quid they ones were very very good taps, good quality, crack, cracking taps, mate. So um, I'll stick the banner up for you. Oh, um, you'll get Shug on the boys on tour, eighteen eighty eight, and Instagram boys on tour. Uh, sorry, on Facebook and Instagram as well. You can catch them on YouTube as well. So right, guys, end of show. As per usual, CSP room one hundred one, which is always. Very eventful, very very eventful. Um, last week was good. This week I'm going to I'm going to start off with I'm going to start off with Andy this week, Hoggy. Um, I think sometimes when you get the pictures through, you've kind of got half an idea of what the conversation's going to be. <coughs> so again, guys, for for people that haven't watched us today, CSP one hundred one every week, and it's the old Frank Skinner show. If you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, it goes in the it goes in the bin. So Andy CSP one oh one this week is Hoggy, oh, just keep the comments up so we can keep the yeah the pictures up. Once the pictures goes away, you can put the comments back up. So Andy's one oh one this week is absolutely no idea. And as we say every week. We, I get the guys to send me their pictures on a Friday. Um, we've got absolutely no context to what what it is. We, I, I just tell them to send me a picture. I don't want to know what, what's behind the picture or whatever it is. But Andy, your room 101 CSP this week is that. Explain yourself. It's the foil cover uh, containers like Nivea cream and Philadelphia spread and not so much butter, but that they see the covers we get once you take the lid off. It's it's no name, it's no the actual foil cover. It's people that take the lid off and peel the foil back about quarter of an inch if that and scoop everything out and then fold it back out and put the lid in. Why did he know just it does my not and it happens and I, I can take stuff out of the fridge and you open the lid up and it's been opened but the foil's been put back here and it's like fucking ripping it off and putting it in the bin. It's like who's left the foil on? Ah, it's, it's better on than half. No, it's no. It's uh, 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 I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a leave leave the foil on guy. So right, right, that's right. So hockey, see see if you're making about a toast, right? Yeah, and you open up the, the Philadelphia. I don't put Philadelphia in toast, mate. It's bargain. Right, well, I like Philadelphia, so get it up, <laughs> you. But if if you're in the fridge and you open something up that's got foil on the top of it, do you scoop whatever out you're taking out and then put the foil back on, then the lid, and then put it back in the fridge? I do. I take the foil right off it. Aye. If it's, like, if it's the love pack with your butter and you get that, it's no foil, but you get that yeah. film on it. Oh, that's different. That's different. How's it different? No, what's the that's difference? That's different. It's not going to keep it any fresh up because once the lid's opened, then it's been exposed to the air, so it doesn't matter if you put the foil oh, on right, right. right. It's got a lid on it. So. Well, you're, well, you're a fucking foil scientist now, eh? <laughs> no, but it's true. It's true, isn't it? Right, open, well, it's I'm, I'm, air, I'm, dirty I'm, air, I'm so it's... I'm a foil keep on the hands guy, so get it up you. Yeah. Andy, I'm with you, brother, as well. If you got if you got any sort of, of thing like that as well, which has got a protective cover on it as well. But I've seen Rosemary's point there as well. She keeps it on to keep it fresh. I get that. I get that. Yes, Rosemary. I'm with you, I'm Rosemary. I'm with as well. That it, it rips my tits as well. That if you've got to get back and peel it and then scoop and then put it back down, just right after it. So, so see if that's the case. See if keeping the foil <laughs> thing on is to keep it fresh. Why put it in the fridge? Just leave it out if it keeps it fresh. The fridge keeps just, it fucking just, fresh. No, the foil just wrapper. Cover. Just a it's cover being kept at a temp pot. certain temperature. It's not going to change <laughs> the, the exposed air that it's been 
fucking open to. That's that's trapped on there forever. It's just between the foil and the fucking hang, which is fucking open anyway. <laughs> right. Right, okay. Listen, I'm I'm saying I'm a foil on guys, but it's two to one, so if you just want to put foil on funky things, then right, okay, it's in the bin. It's in the bin. Um, I, I, I had a I had a massive rant last week um on on my CSP one oh one, so I'll go next. And I'm going to let Hoggy go last because I don't I don't think it's going to be massively controversial, but I think it'll be a good wee talking point. That this is mine this week. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it, it's nothing it's nothing other than exactly what the picture shows. It's it's nothing other than what the picture shows, right? <coughs> Hank I was maybe 20, 29, 30 doing the doing the Coleman that I was going, ah man, that's a way. That's 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 no happening, man. That's that's gone. So I, I was I, I was twenty two when I started going bold. Aye. So I, I think that picture's a bit a bit eccentric. And there's a right, right good chance I'll look like this cunt when I'm seventy. <laughs> but the, the, the <laughs> but the reason the reason for the picture was Right, I'm as bold as I could, man, right? I, I know a, a lot of people, I work with a lot of people that have got these side bits and just bald up there. Save it off, man. Save it off or go to Turkey, right? I, I, I don't know why you would just stoke down the pub with that fucking shirt on and like that, right? I'm going to go and go for a pint tonight. As I say, that picture's a wee bit worse than fucking what I was doing but if you're going bald go bald gracefully if you don't want to go bald go to Turkey but for me my CSP 101 is people hanging on to these bits get that to fuck man don't don't just walk him hoggy and th this is the point that you because you've got a tea biscuit in the top of your head um obviously I need the baldy trucker but <laughs> Just don't don't hang on to the side bits, but hoggy. You know what I, I mean? Know, I, I get, listen, Who I'm, you talking about? I'm, 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 I'm hanging on for dear life with what I've got the tap. But listen, when, when that day comes, I kind of get away with, with what's the tap anymore. It's all coming off. There's nothing going to be in the sides like the fucking, like the, the, the map, the island here as well. It's got fuck all with it with your, your side bits. Aye. I'm with you on that deal, boy. I just, I, I just think that I, I, I was the same hoggy. Like, you try, you try to kind of hold on to it and all that, and do what you're doing. But don't, don't walk about with the, the side bits and all that, like a mad fucking Jimmy Savile fucking band. Know what I mean? Just get it off. Yeah, it off. Don't, I think Donny boy is, is speaking for, for you boys there as well. Here, here's for poofs and women. <laughs> 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 You're not allowed to see women anymore. Nah, nah, I know. Here's today, gone tomorrow. Bald is beautiful. Aye, that's it, mate. Oh. Right, the last one tonight. Um, I say there's always. We don't. We don't know. It's a lot of hairspray, Gary. A lot of hairspray, mate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> state. Aye, I know, mate. I know. Not bad yet, man. It's not that bad. I'm not coming. Hoggy just fucking prick. Pratt sticks his fucking vinyl at the weekend and does a hot stone in the kitchen. <laughs> ah, just collect a shave <laughs> right, anyway, la la Last but not least is Mr. Hogg. No, 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 hold on, hold on. We've no seed in the route yet. Oh, if, if you've just got wee bits of fluff, not get it. Aye, if the side bits get it off. Get the side bit off. Aye, definitely, you. man. Absolutely, no need to store about that. Yeah. Aye. You know what I mean? No need. Get fucking them either. That's what Mr. Hogg, I, I, I know you. I know you said earlier it's maybe no as exciting as it looks, but I'm looking forward to yours this weekend, big man. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> hey, hey. Spam. Yes, mate. Right, but not not in the traditional sense you're seeing there. Right, this is where I tried to kind of put these after the a wee bit as well. Right, and I've got another story. I know last week's one one as well was my pants story. But I told that's you that's one of the fucking best things that's ever happened in this podcast. Uh, that, that was that, that was that was good, right? But 
Andy should have been on the stage at the Apollo with that fucking answer. <laughs> that, was, that was fucking brilliant. Spam so, spam in, in its form there as well. I don't I've no ate spam for fucking years and years. Remember spam fritters at school were fucking tremendous. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um but spam Phenomenal. the spam the spam actually talking about is what I want today, not only put it in the bin, but I want to actually point a fucking rifle at the fucking absolute cretins that send you spam shite on your emails, right? Oh now, right. This oh, is where right. I'm going to do it, right? So for, you'll all you'll all probably be the same as well in your your personal email account. You get you get spam fucking sent with Prince and IG. They want to give you a million pound or fucking Ukrainian darlings moved in next door and want a fucking husband or something like that as well. Are you going to fuck off? I'm not stupid enough to fall for that stuff. However, a wee thing when happened two weeks ago in the work right. So work emails. I started getting a lot of fucking but people emailing me that I didn't know what the fuck it was. Right. So end up. One of the ones I just emailed back and it was like, how how did you get my information? They're trying to sell you stuff and it's like HR products and it's this product and that product, this product. I don't know these cunts are. So I end up email back back and just say, just out of interest, I'm no in, I'm no interested, but just out of interest, how did you get my details? And then they went on this big fucking business. Oh, Mr. Oh, fucking... Hawk, we know you. We know you. It's off the you, you, you poor Mr. Hawk. But then, then they started going on and saying, we got your details from Zoom, LinkedIn, all these fucking places where see if you've got like a profile with your, with your job and all that on it. These fucking nuggets will just basically potty Ted for the butchers. You know? I know, uh, man, that's like fucking, that's like uh, guinea fowl and uh, cross, cross heats and all that. But these, these cunts will basically just go and, and, and basically just sweep up fucking emails for anywhere. And it's the, it just it, get, it absolutely irritates the fucking boss hack off me nowadays that I could go in as well and have six emails sitting in my fucking work account and I guarantee you four of them are for some absolute fucking cretin trying to sell me a fucking computer package or some fucking absolute shite. And that's on top of the cunts that's why to give me money and fucking get me a wife and all the shite that you get on your own fucking emails anyway. See anybody that's selling, that's sending spam, and if you're one of these guys, I don't know what anybody's job is for a living, if you, but if you're in trailing fucking websites as well to try and find <laughs> fucking folks' email addresses, to try and punt them onto some fucking stupid... <coughs> See if you've got a hot Ukrainian bird that wants dealt with, just come onto the podcast and say, boys, I've got a bird that's dealt with, which one of the CSPs want to date? Don't try and fucking date and then steal my money at the same time, you fuckers. Right? So my CSP 101 for this week is spam but not only the spam itself the cunts that fucking cultivate your email addresses as well to put you in every single fucking outbox of yeah. well, to send you absolute fucking so, uh, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it, it, fuck if it, if it separating the meat for the indians separating the meat for the indians Aye, so so are we separating the, the spam meat for the Indian call centers here? But then the, the all right, the, I, 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 so, I, that's what I'm saying. So that, spam meat. I love spam. I, love I have spam. nothing against spam meat. Listen, I'm a boy from your house as well, a skin boy. I'm pretty sure I've right, fucking. Okay. So I, I'm, 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 really, I'm really in regards to the the emails and all these fucking Aye. cretins that are in these places that they they can go in the bin. But not only, not only as, the spam. Long, as long as as long as I live, right. these people, in fact. Right. You what, can keep what, is the, what is the chances if um, we can get these cunts to sponsor the podcast? <laughs> Harmel, okay. okay, what actually is your email? Just so we can let everybody know, not to fucking send spam to you. Um, I think it's Del, Del Boy O'Reilly 116 at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, so, some of the stuff I get on that, since, since, since I put it on the, the, the YouTube channel in the description box, mate, it, it's it's been insane, man. Like, Aye. obviously, you'd send to me hogging our week, like, there was some mad crackpot on you had to you had to delete her. Like, <coughs> I get loads of emails now. It doesn't bother yeah. me, you know what I mean? Because it's no. not, it's not as so if folk are phoning me or messaging me, but just Aye. random stuff like, <laughs> I, I, this, is, this is the ugliest podcast in the world, know that. <laughs> and I just email back saying, no bother, at least my fucking was no man to. Know what I mean, and then just block them, but aye, aye, it's good. Aye, so that that, that was a that was a good CSP one oh one. So I think to be fair, they have got a good point. 
The spam, the spam <laughs> email. I uh, fuck you. I think you're, you're very handsome, mate. I know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Boggy, this isn't a grinder, mate. All right, let's talk about this in the green room. <laughs> in, the, in the green room, mate. In the green room with the wee man. <laughs> <laughs> um, aye, that's another, another, another great Friday show. Um, as I said, the start of the show, the, the amount of people that have, that have jumped on the bus in the last, yeah. the last wee while for... I don't know, Hoggy, maybe September time you were sitting at maybe 450 subscriptions. Um, um that probably I. Now we're kind of pushing that 1k. Um, obviously, <coughs> Kevin Pad Paddy and that's helped too. Andy's come in and made a massive difference with the TikTok and that stuff. So I know awesome. I keep the feet myself, but without, <laughs> without everybody here commenting and, and subscribing to the channel, no, 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 that it wouldn't be worth our while, but it, it's so much better when me and Hoggy and Andy are sitting on a Friday night and you've got a hundred people on commenting and all talking to each other. It's it, it's so much better. So I we appreciate it all, man. And if you've not liked and subscribed to the channel, do it. Um, share it to your social media as well. Uh, uh, if you're on the YouTube channel, there's a I know, Hoggy, you can hear a cat. I've got is this a fucking cat I can hear, aye. aye. The way uh, the cat in here. Oh, it's the way there because I just did an absolute belter of a joke and I'll fucking definitely know what to say. It. Hello, is the way still there? Hello, cat. Is the way still there? Right, right, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, right, I'll, 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 I'll text you the joke. And sorry, that, cat, that, that, cat's, that cat's got some mad eyes, man. See when it looked right at the camera there, it was like, I know. That's just a new addition. We've got an hour in Casper. He's a big white, kind of long haired, fluffy one. We've got a dog and all. So it's like. That's my, that's my acid just kicking in now, man. If you've seen that. <laughs> He's called Lucifer. Andy doesn't discriminate against pussies, black or white pussies. Andy's right in about it. That's it, mate. That's it, mate. Yeah. Any colour, any colour, any shape, any depth. <laughs> hey, that's plenty. <laughs> Any colour, any shape, any depth. Where the fuck that come from? That's some slogan. That's like a salesman's. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a fucking drink of wine. Any depth. Any depth. What? <laughs> ah, you know. I know how. I've got, I've got my that. limitations here. Shall <laughs> <laughs> I, I get a slinky? Any, if there's any females listening as well, these two boys oh, are yeah. absolute disgrace. <laughs> I was talking about feelings. Oh, fuck. And, yeah. and you, need, you need to clip that wee bit that I just said there, because I can't yeah. remember it. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. I, I, I could feel a slinky. Right, anyway. Friday night, there's been another belter. Again, thanks very much to everybody. Hope you all have a brilliant weekend. <coughs> I'll be... I'm weekend. back on Monday night. Big Hoggy, hopefully, is back Monday. Yes. Uh, Andy... I don't know what Andy's up to. His, his travel, Andy's travels will dictate, but Andy's wherever he is, he's always on. So Kevin, I don't know. Ke Kevin's down at the caravan with a good lady. Um, I've got to say something again there. I need to really watch what I'm saying. Um, aye, so we'll see you on Monday night, seven pm as per usual. Uh, Post match St Mirren, and we'll have a wee look forward to the Jambos next Wednesday night. Thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. I'm just looking for a wee outro there, but <laughs> and, and, and he's not done it. There ain't, any females, there ain't any females tuned in, Kieran's just saying there as well. There, I think it was like a lassie called Rosemary that was commenting there later on. That's the only reason I apologise there, Kieran. I've seen right. a Rosemary one, whether that's somebody, whether that's one of these spam fuckers as well, kidding on it's a name to try and spam uh, us. Um, anyway, listen, yeah. it's been a pleasure. We thank every single one of you for listening. Have a blessed weekend. Take care. God bless. We'll be back on Monday night, 7 p.m. And we will do a wee porno outro for the CSP's favourite post. Here we go.
Para pa para pa. Sobtrain, ana. So, I think they forgot the end of 